focus on my right hand here. Stairway to Heaven, obviously. Wayne Sorbelli. Some guitar lessons from my music store down in Key West. Hanging out with my buddy Josh here. Talking about Zeppelin songs and thought to make a quick video since all the ones that we've looked at um, seemed pretty difficult. So I was going to try to break this down into an uh, easy intermediate guitar lesson rather than an advanced lesson. Uh, guitars in standard tuning. If you play along to the records or CDs or whatever you call the tracks on the computer, make sure if you're doing it with a live version, often Led Zeppelin tune to E flat, which means that the guitar, every string is tuned down a half step. So E flat, A flat, but we're not doing that. We're gonna do it in standard tuning, just like the recording on the record, okay? And um, this came out on Led Zeppelin 4, or their fourth album, which was untitled actually. Uh, people call it Zoso, that's its nickname, because all it had on it was four symbols, one for each member of the band, which I thought was cool. They didn't want any words, they were just using symbols. I come and think about it, I guess that was far ahead of Prince. Prince became a symbol uh, somewhere along the lines. But anyway, back to the back to the basics, guys. We're making here, starting off with this A minor chord shape, but you don't even have to know that for right now. All you have to know is that I am barring or pressing all at one time, first, second, third, and fourth strings. With that finger, I kind of roll my hand to the side a little bit. For me, it feels better to actually um, fret it with kind of like the bony part of my hand and not right on the very front. When I use the very front of my finger, some of the strings actually line up to be like right in the crack of my finger and then I, I'm getting like a, muty, a muting sound or a buzzing sound. So I just manipulated it throughout the years until I found the spot that works just right for my hand. So try it, try, try different spots, you know, try pushing flat and then you have to get uh, this finger here. So this finger has to come up and around and not bump the string below it, otherwise you're gonna get that, that muted sound or damped sound. So to get that finger off of that, two things you do. One, you move your elbow in close to your body. That brings this part of my hand, my knuckles watch, out in front of the guitar. You see that? Sometimes to get it right, people put their guitar in front of them and do like this. You see very, very common where people are playing, especially during a solo, they'll rest the guitar like this on their hip. That's so that it puts it in a classical guitar position, by the way, which is like a 45 degree angle that allows us to um, play the most amount of possibilities the most efficiently in, 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 a, in an actual proper position. Playing for most parts of songs, we don't have to be in proper position, so we don't just always hold our guitar just one way like this. But for some stuff, it's just impossible to play unless you hold the guitar a certain way. Hence was born all the cool rock star poses that we see. People are doing like this. Yeah, that's because you need to have the fretboard at this angle in order to do the riffs that you're expected to for certain kinds of music. Now, back to this. <coughs> um, I'm gonna bring my hand, make sure your knuckles are out in front of the fretboard so that your hand is coming up, back down, so that my hand is coming up, my third finger rather is coming up and looping over, hooking, not looping, hooking over that third string so that it's not muting it out like this. Watch. That, well, that's because my knuckles are even with or beyond the fretboard. Your knuckles must be out in front of the fretboard or you will hit adjacent strings and you will sound like you're farting. And it's not cool, <laughs> all right? <laughs> I mean, if you're doing a song about farts, I guess you can use that technique. But most people I know, that's not their intent when they're trying to play this, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> stairway to the bathroom, right? <laughs> stairway to the commode, man. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, back on track. <laughs> so hook up over that string over there. Don't hook up with it or you're a sicko. <laughs> Although, it's funny, it's a G string. G string. Never mind, but anyway, okay. <laughs> Your first move. And the way I'm picking the strings, both at the first and fourth at the same time. And then two, three.
into a, a one spot, which I'll show you later. Until then, you can do. Okay, so we're starting off one. If you notice, this note is going to descend the entire riff, okay? And um, that helps us keep our spot. It does for me, and I know other players that had said it does for them as well. So watch. So now I know this has to drop down one. So I'm gonna use this finger there, and then this finger goes here. So while this bass line is descending or going down, the melody line is gonna be going up as the bass line is going down. Jimmy Page did not invent that technique. I can't remember the song, um, well, I don't think that even the song before him invented it either. It's just a very old classical music technique as one line's ascending, the other one's descending. It sounds very cool, watch. That one goes down by one. This note goes up by, by the next note. This one's gonna go down again. And then notice I use my middle finger whenever possible to back up and assist the finger so I can play longer, be more efficient and play for, you know, <laughs> until I'm 150 years old. Maybe 800 or something, I don't know. Yoda years, right? Now watch. Then, like I said, this one goes down into this one, and then this one's gonna go up to this one. Same picking. Now this note's gonna go down one more, but I'm gonna use my third finger for it and slide this note right into position. Bam. Looks just like the first chord we made, okay? Because it is, except now we're gonna add on the second string, right there, middle finger. Now it's not the same chord that we started with. It's a D chord. We start here like this, that's an A minor. This is a D. Now the next chord is where we're gonna not pick it exactly the same. So far all along, remember, we're, we're picking strings four and one, and then Two, three, one. And then when we get to this next chord though, which is an F major seven, this note drops down again. Remember the bass line is ascending one note at a time, the whole song, not the whole song, the entire progression. So there it is, and then I'm going to just let my fingers cascade or, or roll down the steps, so to speak, one after the other, right? I'm leaving this E string open. That's what's making it an F major seven chord. If I were to borrow that, that's my regular F chord. But that note, for this is not in there, he's adding the flat, uh, he's adding the note before the root, which makes it the major seven chord. And the way you pick that one is instead of picking these two and then two, three, one, now it's pick those two and then three, two, I'm sorry, pick them both together and then two, three, two instead of two, three, one. It sounds like this. Back up, strings one, two, three, walking right into this final end of the phrase. What I'm doing there is picking this string with the thumb, third string with my finger, and then putting my finger here, picking the same two strings. It's hard to do this, so I'm gonna move it back here where I have some space, but I want you to see that close up. These two strings, five and three. Same strings, five and three, except my finger's moving and actually staying on the same fret. So it's kind of an easy move. Sounds really, really good. And then coming from there to start that pattern back over, one of my favorite sounds of the song is this nice big slide. Open A string, starting at the second fret and slide all the way up to the eighth fret. And then back one to the seven right back into position for starting the progression over again. Is that 
just like it, Josh? Mm-hmm. Think it's good enough? Yeah. Anything else you think I should add to that? No, that's the riff. That's it's the pretty thing. good. Yeah. That's it, right? Um, I, I, I can do it real slow so you can try to practice along with it if you like, just to have that on there. The point is to not pause between the chords. So you might have to do it this slow to play along. You'd be surprised at how hard this is to play in timing. this if you can. Swear Belly, that's my channel name, that's my name. Uh, please, oh wait, I forgot I was gonna cast the spell. I Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. You love the content. All right, thanks. Rock on. Later.